I'm really excited to announce I'm going to turn into a professional tournament angler. Well, not really, but let's talk about it. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family. I kind of feel like I snaked you a little bit already, but I apologize, but I should say thank you to all the people who are new subscribers, who are new members, who are constantly interactive and commenting on the channel. I really do appreciate it. It's so overwhelming and wonderful, and I just can't say thanks enough, but thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, you should be. Help me reach my goal. Click that like and subscribe button, and welcome to the team. Let me make it very clear, I am not turning into a professional angler. First off, I don't want to take the fun away from fishing. While I think I might make a reasonably adequate tournament professional, I just don't think it's in my temperament, and to be honest, I think I'm too old. But I recently read Bernie Schultz's Bassmaster.com article, and also I've watched Jacob Fouts give his, his stats after every tournament, and I really appreciate the honesty that these guys have. And it made me think, what would happen if I wanted to become a professional angler? And I'm down here in Florida. So what I did was I really thought about all the things that might come up, and there might be extra stuff that I just am not thinking of. And I made myself, of course, a spreadsheet. Now I should say, this has been looked into for hours. I live in Florida, in Apopka, and I actually went and figured out how far it is from each place, from Apopka to like Palatka, which is the first tournament, and figured out how many miles it would be. And then assumed that I was getting about 15 or 16 miles to a gallon of gas and diesel, and divided that number to get how many gallons I think it would be, then times that by what I think diesel gas is at this point in time, and got specific with the numbers. And then I went on Trivago and Verbo and found reasonable lodgings. Now I should say, you're gonna see the lodging cost. This is how much it would cost me to stay at that place, at a reasonable house. Now I could get this to go a little bit less if I had a, a, a someone to join me, or another angler to join me. So it could be cut by about six, six and a half thousand dollars maybe. But I tried to make it reasonable. There are times where if I were to have to go from Florida to Texas or Florida to Michigan and Wisconsin, that I have to assume that it would take me one or two extra days to get there and to get back. And while I could sleep in my car, which isn't the worst thing, or truck, which isn't the worst thing, I added a little bit of extra money for lodgings, a little bit extra money in the lodgings budget so that I would know, so that I'd be able to stay at a hotel. And when I have food and drink in one category, that means how much I'm gonna spend on, hopefully, a reasonable amount of spending money at not fancy restaurants, because I can eat Subway and I can eat McDonald's, but at some point in time you get sick of that. So I would probably add a little bit more to my money budget which isn't much as is. I think the money budget and tackle is probably the least expensive money I think I can get away with. Now I'm going on the whole premise that I don't have any sponsors. Maybe I have some friends that will give me some tackle. Maybe I have some friends in these areas where I could stay with them if possible. But I'm going on this only if I was doing this by myself, that I was gonna leave my family and fish the Elite Series, not the MLF, I'm going on the Elite Series, nine tournaments for 2025. Somehow I made it through the whole Bassmaster Open. Luckily, claim, was able to claim one of the nine or 10 spots. And now I'm getting to fish the Elites. And this is what my cost, I think, would be. Now, luckily for me, they have two tournaments in 2025 in Florida, Palatka. Now, of course, we're gonna have a $5,000 entry fee at every tournament, but, and we'll also have a truck payment too, because I don't think they a lot of anglers put the truck payment in. We have to assume that I have a memo boat, which means I can use the boat during the year, but then during the off season, I need to find someone to buy that boat so I can get a newer boat the next year. So I do not have a boat payment. I also am not putting into this insurance, like car, truck, boat insurance, health insurance, because hopefully that can be covered by my spouse. So we have entry fee, truck payment, gas for the truck, boat gas, lodgings, fishing licenses, tackle, miscellaneous, which would be anything, and that's just the budget, food and drinks, and then maintenance on the car. 
So for St. John's, because it's not too far away, I technically could get rid of the lodgings, but I feel I would have about $125 in gas, $963 to stay there in Palatka. I don't need a fishing license, thank goodness. 50 bucks in tackle because what I have should be good to fish out there. I fish here in Florida nonstop, so I don't think I need that much extra crap. Miscellaneous, we have $200. Food and drinks, we have $230. With the truck payment and the entry fee, I think my cost is going to be $7,268. For Lake Okeechobee, of course, we have the boat fee. We have the truck payment. We have gas, which I think is going to be $225 because even though Okeechobee is about two hours and seven minutes away, it's still 115 miles, give or take. So I added that 115 miles back and forth, some extra gas. So I think about $225 should cover it. I uh, For boat gas, I know that seven days I'm going to be running all over Okeechobee, depending on the weather. So I put $300 down. For lodgings, I have $1,105. Not too bad, I'm not staying at a great place, but I'm staying on the water and it's decent. I don't need a fishing license. I don't think I need any tackle, so I did give myself a $50 air here for, for tackle. Miscellaneous is $200, and then food and drinks I put down for $280 total. It isn't super hot, so I'm not gonna need, need tons of water and Gatorade, but Okeechobee's in the middle of nowhere, and there's really not a lot of great places to eat. So, my total cost at on Okeechobee is going to be $7,560. Now's when the fun starts. Now that we get out of Florida, gas costs are going to cost a lot more. For gas to go to the Pasco Tank River, sorry, I mispronounced that, I think it's going to cost me $650 to get there and back. I think I'm going to need $300 in gas. It's going to cost me $1,423 for lodgings. I need a fishing license, which is $38. I need tackle, which is probably going to be about $200. Miscellaneous is $200 throughout the whole thing and then $250 for food and drinks. I also think this is where I'll need to get a some, some maintenance on my boat and my truck. So I gave myself an allowance of 650 bucks here. That includes a, like oil change, and that includes anything that the boat might need at this point in time. Maybe getting the oil change, maybe getting some just regular maintenance so they don't have any breakdowns. I gave myself $650 there. This tournament is really the most, the second most expensive one for me. This one's going to cost me $9,111. That's a lot of money. For Lake Hartwell, I had to drive back home. But we had, we didn't have a truck payment this month because it's in the same month. We had $425 in gas, $300 in boat gas, $1,060 in lodgings, we had a license of $35, tackle 100 bucks. I think I'll probably need some new stuff, miscellaneous of 200 and then 200 in food and drinks. And that's being very generous and optimistic for food and drink. But I do know some people in South Carolina, so I'm hoping that I can go over and have a meal with them. But after everything was all included, I had $7,320 in possible fees for 2025. We go to Lake Fork next, and this is where things get really sketchy. I'm not sure about my gas prices if they're remotely correct on this one, but we had boat fee, we had a truck payment, we had $315 in gas to get there. We also needed extra hotel room, we need $200 in boat gas, we had a lodgings of $1,346, we needed a fishing license which was $40, we needed tackle which was $100, miscellaneous which was $200, and then again $200 for food and drink. That one cost us $7,761. From Lake Fork, we go to the Sabine River, so we're just gonna stay that week. There's no sense in coming home and driving back. It's a long drive. We have $5,000 for the entry fee. We don't have a boat uh, truck payment this month because we it's the same month. We had $400 in gas. We had $250 in boat gas. We had lodgings of $1,050. We already had our fishing license. Our tackle's $100. Our miscellaneous is $200. Our, and our food and drinks is $250 for a grand total of $7,290. From there, we go to Lake Ten Killer. We come back home, go to Oklahoma. We, of course, have the boat, uh, the entry fee. We have $400 for the truck payment. We have $825 for gas, $200 in boat gas. Our lodgings are $1,323. I forgot to add in my, my fishing license, so probably add in $25 or $30 bucks here. 
tackle is 100, miscellaneous is 200, food and drinks is 250, and maintenance is $150. I figured here I needed another oil change and might as well do it. I might as well take care of the equipment that I have so that it doesn't break down later on. When we go back to, we come back home, we go to Lake St. Clair, Michigan. Now here's, the problem with me going to Michigan is I need to hit Detroit and go to Lafayette and I need to hit all the spots that I used to go to when I was a child. I tried to take that out of the works. I tried to say, I'm not gonna go to Kevin Van Damme's house. I'm not gonna go see Mark Zona, not that they invited me. But those are two friends. But I could ask if I could stay with them or go see them, at least say hello, or at least go to dinner with them and just see how things are going. We had our entry fee, we had a boat payment, we had $550 in gas, we had $350 in boat gas, we had $1,230 in lodgings, including a hotel night. We had $76 for a license, $200 for tackle, $200 for miscellaneous. I gave myself $300 for food, and that came to $8,306. We stayed that whole week because it's only several, four, 539 miles from Lake St. Clair, but we go to the Mississippi River after that for in Wisconsin. Of course, we have a, a entry fee, we have a boat fee, we have an $800 gas fee. Now, I do, now that I'm thinking about that, that means leaving St. Clair, going to Wisconsin, and coming home, I think is about $800. We had $300 in gas because I'm going to be running all over. We're going to have $2,100 in lodgings. That's the extra nights that I have to stay. And the Verbo, Travago, whatever you want to call, is more expensive up there than any place else. We had $20 for a license, $50 in tackle, because hopefully I don't need any more tackle, $200 for miscellaneous stuff, $400 for food and drinks, coming to $9,270. Now, that gave me a grand total of just my tournaments at $72,334. Now, because I'm a pro, I have to go to the Classic. I may not have made the Classic because I suck at fishing, but I still had to go to the Classic to support and try to gather sponsors. I figured to do that, I needed $343 for an airplane ticket. I needed $163 for a car rental. I don't even have gas prices in here, but I know that it's gonna cost me $351 for lodgings at a hotel over those four days and food and drinks, we're gonna say 100 bucks because there's a lot of times when you go to iCast and you go to the Classic, you have people that have sponsored dinners and stuff like that, and so hopefully I get invited to those. But when I look at it, I needed almost $1,000 to just go to the Classic at the bare minimum, and that doesn't include gas. That's a lot of money. So when you look at it, I have almost $75,000 in fishing tournament fees and the Classic for one year next year just because I live in South, you know, I live in the middle of Florida. If I lived in the middle of the country, it might be a little bit different. But those areas to go down to Lake Fork and to go to Lake St. Clair, that's a lot of driving. So should I become a, a professional tournament angler on the leads? I'm not accepted, but should I do it? Should I take that $75,000 hit right off the bat? And not even guaranteed I will cash a check at every place. I think, Realistically, I could probably get a check down here in Florida. I know how to fish down here. I think I could get a check in South Carolina. I think I could get a check in Texas. But once I go north, Wisconsin, Michigan, as much as Michigan's my home state, Wisconsin, Michigan, Oklahoma, and really North Carolina, I think I'm screwed. I don't think I'd make my money back, to be honest. That's just being realistic. I think that if I went into it, I probably might make $55,000, $65,000 in earnings. And I'm starting off in the hole at $75,000. Is it all right to be a tournament professional tournament angler? You tell me. What do you think of this kind of video? I really do appreciate you guys hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Cheers and thank you.